Where, where, how did you know how to put this all together? I had excellent health, as were you. Quite a lot of planning went into this. I would say so. Hello, fellow game devs. In the last video we set up our character's animations with simple idle, running and jumping animations. Now we want to actually move our player with some sort of input system. That means we want to press a button and force some code to run after pressing a button. It's as easy as that. The first thing we need to do is to mapping the keys to the movement. So let's say I want to press A for moving left and D for moving right. Luckily we can use the input mapper with the Godot settings for exactly that. Here we can just set up a new action like move left or jump or attack or something like that and select one or more corresponding keys. Just remember which names you gave to that actions. Once we have done that we can focus on controlling the player. So we create a new scene and give it a character body 2D node. Don't copy the actual player model in it that you're using, we will do that later. We create a new C Sharp script and give it a fitting name like player movement or player controls. Godot will then automatically generate a script for us. This already contains gravity for the player, a jump action and a movement action. So let's just swap the generated input actions with those we have set up earlier in the mapping. We can already run that script and see what it does. Let's just quickly create a new scene, set up a static body 2D and a collision shape as the ground. This will be our test scene. We then also instantiate our player as a child scene. Now when we run the scene by pressing this button or pressing F6, you can see that it already works pretty much the way we expect. However, I don't like that we now use two directions that we don't need. So instead of checking for the whole vector 2, we will rewrite it and only use the left and right axis since we will never going to give it the vertical direction. Get it? Never gonna give you up? Uh, this is a physics based movement, so it is good that it was directly placed within the physics process function. However, I don't like that it checks for the jump and the left and right movement within the same method. So let's create a dedicated method for that to make the code a little more readable. This changes absolutely nothing about the functionality though, you can keep it the way it is if you want to keep it that way. Also the speed of the jump movements and the gravity are currently constant. Let's change these to be exportable. Rebuild the project and now you should see them in the inspector. Okay, now we need the cook to be actually able to play its animations. This cook has a node 2D as a top node and contains an animation player as a child. So let's go on and create a class called mannequin, which can be later either just added as the main script or be inherited and enriched with additional character specific functionalities. We can already set up the name of the animation that should be played directly within the ready function by referencing the animation player. However, we don't want this since writing strings in the logic makes the code quite messy, so we use an enumeration with the names of the current animations that we have and give it a speaking name. So instead of manually typing each name, uh, we can use this enum to play an animation with the same name, so let's quickly create a function that does exactly that for us. Also, we will give this method a transition time, which we are then later able to change in the inspector. Great! But how do we now actually change the animations? So we can use the player controller and directly call the mannequin, but we don't want that. We want more flexibility, so we use something like the observer pattern, and we can use this pattern by using c -sharp events. This is exactly what happens when you're using Godot signals, but I want to show you what will happen under the hood. For that we will send an event on our player controller class whenever we change something in the velocity and afterwards let the mannequin listen to these events. For that we will quickly create a new class called character controller. Here we will create an event handler as well as custom event arguments for our velocity as well as a function to call from our player controller class. 
Now we can fire the event each time we update the velocity in our player controller class and we're done. In our mannequin class we can now go and listen to that event and act accordingly. So in order to do that let's first create a method to check if the character is moving left or right by checking the absolute value of the x velocity and then give him the running animation. Now we want to check if the parent contains a character controller, the class we created before. Since checking the parent hierarchy for a specific class is a common use case, I have written an extension for that. To do that, just create a new class, name it however you want and make sure to reference the class you want to extend with the this keyword. If you only want to check the direct parent, you can use Godot's already implemented getParent method. But we have a different use case, uh, so we will create this extension method. Oh, and while we are already at it, we also do that for finding a specific child node. Then we can use that to find the animation player instead of manually linking that. If we now play this scene, the character should already have its idle animation. Now we only need to subscribe to this event and set up the velocity from our event arguments. Now the player should already move. We will then extend the event arguments with a boolean for the isOnFloor method. That is a Godot function which checks if the bottom of a collider is touching the top of another collider. Afterwards we check for that within the mannequin and decide whether to play the jump or down or running animation. And that's it! Now you only need to take care of flipping the mannequin if the velocity is smaller than zero and that's everything. The advantage of using this method is that you can easily override the behavior while still being in control of the actual mannequin, like we did for this custom idle animation script. This mannequin class can also be easily used by enemies, but that will be part of another video. If you want to support us, check out Oakley's Adventure in the iOS App Store or on Google Play Store. But if you really want to support us, you can purchase the ad-free version. Thank you for watching, if you like this video and want to help us create more, please like and subscribe, bye.